Welcome to DC Today, uh, Wednesday, June 28th. Uh, Brian Seitel here with you. Um, uh, kind of a quiet day in, in market action. The Dow closed down about 74 points on the day. It was basically down the entire day by about that much. I think at one point it might have been down 150 or so, but not more, and uh, just sort of traded sideways. Interest rates on the day were um, slightly lower after yesterday's backup, so we had 10-year close at about 371, which was down five basis points on the day. Um, so kind of a quiet summer day in trading. Um, the biggest news really was around a central bank summit um, in Portugal, in Centro Portugal, where there was sort of most of the major central bankers um, around the world um, on stage discussing policy, discussing you know their policy and, and where interest rates might go and inflation and all these sorts of things. Um, Powell, the U.S. central banker, obviously, um, kind of reiterated the same, basically that, uh, you know, more rate hikes were on the, on the table. And not, not only that, but that, you know, consecutive rate hikes could be on the table as well. So read into that what you might. Um, the Fed futures right now is pricing in like a 75 percent chance for a, a, a rate increase in July, uh, which was up a little bit on the day following his comments. But it's data dependent. He, he was asked at one point um, if he thought the uh, inflation rate would get back to 2%, which is, is, is the target, um, you know, when he thought that would happen. Would it be the end of next year, end of this year, that type of thing? And he said basically not until 2025. So, yeah, that the comments were more hawkish than, uh, than I think what, what, uh, what had been predicted. Um, Lagarde and the uh, ECB, so Central Bank of Europe, um, also said, you know, that there was kind of more more work to be uh, to be had as far as getting inflation lower. She did sort of say that, uh, well, it's perfectly possible for a recession in Europe. It wasn't her expectation, and frankly, I don't really know what central bankers are supposed to say when they're asked that question. Um, of course, they're not going to, you know, most of the time figure that they can get it right and sort of have this sort of soft landing with with the economy and, and still being able to get inflation lower. Um, the UK, where inflation is by far the highest, uh, in the G7 at least, um, uh, said the same thing, although I, I thought it was a tell a little bit. Uh, the banker there, his name is Bailey. Um, you know, their Fed, Fed futures for, for the BOE is predicting something like a terminal rate at six and a quarter at this point. And um, he basically said, well, we'll wait and see, you know, what data comes in, if we'll actually get to that number. But all that to say that the one outlier of, of those big central bankers was Japan, um, which is UADA. And, um, you know, they still have Fed policy at zero. In fact, it's lower than zero. They have a central bank policy rate at negative 0.1%. And then they're manufacturing interest rates on the longer end, end of the curve called yield curve control to keep interest rates low and they're doing that because inflation is higher than it has been the past couple of decades it's still somewhere around two percent give or take i think it's actually a little above that right now and i actually um i don't know that they would say this but as far as most of the rest of the developed world being at three and a half to say five and a half on interest rates and then the bank of japan the boj at basically negative point one you just have to realize what that does to currency. It's the the yen is like 144 to one right now against the dollar. So it's really weak, historically weak, weaker than it's been um, in 20 years. I, I think it was a little weaker maybe recently, but I mean more or less, it's the weak as it's been in, in 20 years. So if you're an exporting nation and selling widgets across the world, and you're able to sell them cheaper, that gives you a competitive advantage, aka the the China rule book for many decades. Um, so I don't know that they're necessarily upset about that part of it, but we'll see see how that plays out. Um, all this to say, um, inflation is coming down. Uh, the economy is holding in. Um, I do think it's of note that the debt in this country, uh, the U.S. government debt, the uh, is up 25 percent. So the total amount of debt is up something like 25 percent just in the last three years. So it's a pretty extraordinary thing when you think about that. We've talked about this a lot with the amount of indebtedness and what that does to longer term inflation. It, it tends to bring it down. You know, you, you've pulled forward forward expenditure by issuing that debt to consume now and, and to, to spend more now. And that, of course, hurts, you know, the future if you're having to pay for that. The debt service cost in this country has gone up um, from about one billion a month 
to about $2 billion a month just in the past two years. So at some point, this stuff matters. And I, I do think, uh, uh, as we've talked about with Japanification, or, or David has quite a bit, and I think last week's Dividend Cafe was, was on the topic, um, you can sort of see the difference in some of those central bankers' comments um, and how that sort of plays out. Um, uh, on the consumer side, on the household side in this country, um, also just remember that while the consumer is still very strong, uh, the balance sheet is strong, spending ability is still there, um, you know, one of the larger costs, which is housing, uh, mortgage rates, or I'm sorry, mortgage payments have gone from about $1,500 a month to about $3,000 a month, so doubled. Same thing as, as the interest expense of the, of the government over the past couple of years. And, and all those things will, will come into play as far as the ability to keep consuming and keep spending in perpetuity and what that ultimately means for inflation. Um, the uh, other news today, um, the U.S. The, the, um, US is thinking of uh, curbing uh, exports of uh, AI chips and cloud services to China. So it's just kind of further um, you know, uh, scrutiny, I guess, over the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, national security over some technology export uh, to China um, and so forth. There was um, um, some positive news, I thought. This is kind of a small tidbit, but it, it, I get a lot of questions on um, commercial real estate in the country and, and if, it's, if it's safe and uh, you know, people aren't going back to work and so office space must be worth less and all those sorts of things. There was actually a large transaction in New York City today from technically the, the landlord that we work with there, um, SL Green, on a, a place on 245 Park Avenue was above, uh, far above um, what was expected. So I, 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 th that's a small little takeaway, but the point is that uh, people are going back to work, whether it's New York or across the country. Um, and I just don't think with the protective equity in commercial real estate, that the fears that are out there are gonna end up coming to fruition as far as regional bank lending and those types of things. So more, more to say there. Um, but all in all, kind of a quiet summer day in markets. I'm not going to go on here further. Um, I wanted to give you this, and uh, I'll end it there on the day. Um, I'll be with you back tomorrow. There's, there's a bit more economic data out on the calendar for tomorrow, um, so I'll kind of go through that. There's a revision on GDP. Um, I know there were some jobless claims that we're going to get, and uh, some housing numbers as well. So I'll have plenty for you tomorrow. With that, I wish you all a very nice evening, and I shall talk to you soon. Thank you. Mm -hmm.